is a third of a percent big enough to actually make a difference, to make a significant difference? That's a great question. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. So we're excited that for over 30 years, we've been journeying with you and you've been journeying with us on just creating a life that makes sense to you, that makes sense to your family, that makes sense to for what's up for you in your life. And we get to do it in real estate terms. And really underneath every real estate decision is a family that's in harmony. Because if you make a decision that doesn't work for your family, why bother? That's true. So we're excited that for over 30 years, we've been able to journey alongside you. And this conversation allows us to even go a little bit deeper than we have on some of the shows. Yeah. So when you talk about a rate of return or an interest, mm -hmm. like one third percent, it's, it's seemingly very small. It is very small. Yes. And How often is that one third bad. percent calculated? If it's calculated daily, then now I get a third percent on one day, and then the next day I get another third percent, and the next day I get another third percent. Wow, my money is going to quadruple in a matter of a year or two. Right. So what we're going to learn on this episode, even though in real estate, our money does not grow at the rate of a third of a percent every day or even every week, right? No, it doesn't. It's only every month. Yeah, usually about once a month. Because in Ottawa, and sometimes it's all in one month, and then right. sometimes it doesn't really go up for a few months or right. six months or so a we're year. we're averaging this conversation. Yes. And if you go back, you know, 50 years, for instance, it averages in the Ottawa market about 4%. Right. Now, this last year, we're having very last different- two years. Last two years, very different conversation. And yet, if we want to look at the bigger picture, because these numbers are not sustainable. Ottawa- right market has proved it and so has pretty much every other market that has escalated quickly for a period of time it's not sustainable it doesn't mean it's the market's going the bottom's going to fall out of the market and it's all going to disappear it means this may be the new baseline and then or maybe a little correction and then we're going to go back to our basic third percent per month yeah and year maybe, over year and you know what maybe it's four or five years it doesn't go up yeah it maybe. just stays where it is because we've had quite a number of years previously where the the increase was 1%, 2%. And so there's been some catch-up in part of that. But I think we're ahead of the catch-up now. We are ahead of the catch-up right yeah. now. So if Ottawa averages 4%, then you, you might say to me, well, why is that a significant enough number to make a huge difference? Well, the, the reason it makes a huge difference is most people don't buy their house cash. They don't pay 100% of the cost of it. Right. So if you're buying right now, the average house in Ottawa is over $700,000. Wow. I know. So I don't know. What number do you want to work with as you do your illustration and your example? Well, let's, let's work with uh, maybe a starter home. Okay. Um, we just sold one at about 500. It was a nice, uh, con like not a condominium, it was freehold. We just sold one at 400 too. Yep. So they still exist. Even if the average is 700, there's still some affordable homes. So for ease of use, let's use 500. Okay. You like that for, math? For ease the of math, math is going to yeah. be. Because if you're listening to us, you got to follow. So if you don't have a pen in hand, you might want to go grab one. Now, if you're driving, don't do it. If you're sitting at your desk, I would say do it. If you're working from home, I would say do it. Grab a piece of paper, grab a pen. We'll give you a couple seconds. And the great news is because these are on YouTube, because you've got access to over 503 episodes, you can just go on the Decker Team YouTube channel anytime and watch this as many times as you want and mm -hmm. take notes. You don't have to catch it right now. Yeah. So let's say you've, you've got equity in another house or you've been saving for a while and you've got 20% down. So that's $100,000 on a $500,000 house. Now the the rate uh, the value goes up by four percent. So what's, on average, yeah. So on average, four percent on five hundred thousand 
is how much? 20,000. 20,000. So what's 20,000 return on $100,000? That would be 20%. Right. So that's a 20% rate of return on my investment. Now, let's say you haven't saved enough and you only have 5 or 10%, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have 5% down mm -hmm. on 500. That's 25,000. Right. And the, and the property went up how much? 20%. No. 20,000, sorry, 20,000, 20, 4%, yep. 20,000. Right. So I invested 25,000. My equity went up by 20,000. That's an 80% 80 80%. increase. An 80% increase on your money. And so that's the beauty, as many of our clients have said, and one actually said on our Life's Inside Track episode this week, and our 15 at 15, she actually said to us after listening and watching them, you know what? It's real. Like capital R, capital E, capital A, capital L. It's the real. It's called real estate for a reason because it gives you real returns because it's not just on the, well, it is on the whole amount, but it you could have invested just a portion because it's leveraged, leverage safely. Don't over leverage. Be wise with how much you leverage. I mean, if yeah, you go. Yeah, because leverage works the opposite way. If, right. if you put in 5% and the value goes down 5%, you actually lost all your money. Right. Technically, if you went to sell it. Right. The reason real estate is so advantageous mm -hmm. is A, you don't sell it every day. You, know, you don't day trade real estate. You keep it <clears throat> long term. Right. And then. You actually get to live in it. Right. So you have shelter because you would have had to pay rent yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you're wise about how you do this thing, you could actually pay less on a mortgage, let it increase your equity based on the overall value of the piece of real mm -hmm. estate, not just your, so it's leveraged and give shelter and pay less than you would have if you were renting. Yes. And the other what? thing, yeah. And it's shelter in more than one ways because mm. the growth is in your principal residence right now. It's not taxable. That's sheltered from tax. That's a beautiful way. Now there's a little tool. I use it. It's called the rule of 72. It's mm -hmm. not super accurate. It's just a generality. And what it says mm -hmm. is you take 72 divided by the, the rate of return you're getting and that's how many years it'll take for your money to double. Right. If you're doing calculations on it's so important, my money double. Well, it's important if you have an end goal. It's important to know how many times you have to have your money double to reach that goal. Right. So if you want to plan, mm -hmm. you want to plan to buy a house, you want to plan to build wealth, then we probably should meet. And a great start. <laughs> A great start is if you haven't read the Wealth Formula book yet, the Rule of 72 is in there. I think it's on page 86. I could be wrong, but I think that's where it is. And it also lays out how leverage can work against you, right? It's seemingly insignificant, a third of a percent, but why not have even the seemingly insignificant rates of interest work for you rather than against you? Now, Theo Paphos, mm -hmm. I probably butchered his last name. Just I just said my buddy Theo. Theo. My buddy Theo. Theo said, small does not mean insignificant. We're grateful to be your advocates in growing wealth and wisdom together on life's journey. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward.